morning, everybody. Uh, we pray all is well. Amen. Welcome. This is Shield of Faith, Christian Center of Pasadena, California. And we get thank to have the kitchens with us tonight, and others will be joining us in a few minutes. And we're so grateful. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Time to study. Everybody, if you can go ahead and get your Bible. Remember, we're taking a little walk through the entire New Testament. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. And man, we're making some time. And we, we, we done come through Acts and Romans. And now we're going into 1 Corinthians. Amen. And seeing all of you know what's going on, the dynamics going on in there. We'll kind of touch on that in chapter 10 tonight. Maybe, Pastor Beverly, we can get you to read. Pastor Joe, do you mind give us an opening prayer? Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord, for just being able to be in the land of the living, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for coming together for another night, Lord, to be able to hear thus say the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here this evening, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for those who are to get on, Lord, that they get on, uh, on okay, Lord, and they're able to hear God's word. And we just thank you, Lord, for our bishop and his family, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for their sacrifice, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for them just being used by you mightily, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for our brothers and sisters, Lord, that are sick in their bodies, Lord, that you're just healing them, Lord, and you're healing them, Lord, so that they can do the work that you've called them to do, Father God, and I just thank you. I give you praise for our brothers and sisters throughout, Lord, this world, Lord, from north, south, east, and west, Lord, that are joining us tonight, Lord, via the internet, Lord, and we just thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord, that you will be lifted up, Lord, that you will get the glory, Lord, out of this Bible study. And we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, man. Make me want to Amen. shout. <laughs> that's a prayer. Now, that's a, that's a good prayer. Amen. Pastor Beverly, if you can go ahead and start us off in uh... um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse 1. More, moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. How that all of our fathers were under the under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. And as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto the, them for an examples and they were written for our ammunition upon whom the end of the worlds are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There has no temptation taken unto you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry, I speak as the wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communi communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the blood of the Christ? Of Christ? For we were many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Beloved Israel after the flesh, 
are not they which eat of the sacrifices partaker of the altars? What say I then, that the idols as, the, as anything or that which is offered in sacrifices to idols is anything? But I say, that thing which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not unto God. I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devil. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of the devil, of the devils. Do ye provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things, ed all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, in shambles that eat, asking no questions for the consequences sake, for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not you to be a feast and ye disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no questions for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in the sacrifices unto idols, eat not for the sake of show it, and for the conscious sake. For the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Conscious I say, not thine own, but the others. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I, for if I by grace be partakers, why am I evil spoken for that for which I have taken give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. Amen. Wow. <laughs> out of reading. Welcome everybody again. Uh, Pastor Saylor's on the call. How you doing there, Pastor Saylor? Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you guys hear well on the screen? You heard it? Good, good, good. Hi, right, Sister Bertha. How you doing? You're muted. I'm the last. Ah, no, that's right. So everybody, again, she just read out of, read out of 1 Corinthians chapter number um, 10. So again, if you're just joining us, make sure you get your Bible. Amen. As we go through 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Again, you've been watching us going from chapter to chapter to chapter. Amen. And uh, I, I want to say to you that you're learning how to take baby steps to just study. Because many times when we're out witnessing, it's because we are not confident, confident, excuse me. Uh, and so as a result, that's just where there's some gaps missing. So as you take your time, sometimes you study this way. Pastor Joe, sometimes we take other directions, Pastor Beverly, and we study different ways. Amen. But the key with this is you go one chapter at a time. It's like this morning. I got up early, Pastor Joe. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what happened to me. I went to bed last night and fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> didn't, didn't wake up till after 3 o'clock in the morning and realized, oh, no, I got to go to bed. And then I got up at 6.30 or maybe earlier than that. I can't remember. And I got up. It was not all the way light. Uh, and I started walking. Um, and and it, it was just, you know, I'm looking. And, you know, when you're thinking about in the morning, you're thinking about God and all what's going on. And you, you're grateful that you even got up out of the bed, you're so appreciative. Um, and so as we look at the Bible, uh, we have to have great appreciation that this day we woke up this morning and that God gave us another gift, which is this gift of life. And he protected us while we were asleep. That no harm and no uh, damage came to us. And I know some people say, oh, that's just normal. No, but we give thanks. And the Bible tells me to give thanks in everything. Give thanks in everything. So how have you been doing there, Pastor Saylor? Uh, I'm doing better. Thank you, Lord. Fantastic. Fantastic. So she's calling from out of state. Amen. In a secured location. <laughs> Amen. I'm not telling. <laughs> so we're grateful. We see many of the saints are already on. 
Amen. I see you. All right. There we go, Sister Peggy. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And some more coming in. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, five, seven. Okay. Why five, seven? So sorry. So sorry. Okay. Pastor Sonia, good. Mr. Doris, she's there. I like on Facebook. And I mean, I'm on YouTube. Most of you here tonight is on YouTube. Okay. And then there's Minister Doris, me and Mr. Ron, too. So uh, good to have everybody. Again, get your Bibles. First Corinthians chapter number 10. And let's kind of dialogue, kind of see a small picture. Look at a snapshot of what's going on. I see Bertha got a new location. Brit Bright. Look like she's ready to be a Bible professor. So I got to be on my game tonight. I'm scared of her. Amen. She got that. Uh, we don't know what she got up, up her sleeves. Amen. But there's something in our belly. Amen. For the Holy Ghost. I think there's First Lady. Are you ready to come in, First Lady? I don't know if she can hear me, but I'm going to bring her in. She's going to probably say, you should have waited. <laughs> Amen. Let me see. There she is. Hey, Lady J, how you doing? I don't know if she can hear me. How you doing? All right. You're, you're muted. You're not muted. We can hear you, Jay. I can hear you. Uh, all right, everybody. So what is, as she was reading someone, anybody, um, do we, what did we get out of what was read? Kind of the, the basic gist of it. Anybody want to give it a shot? Um, hmm. All right, Lady J, you know the rule. You are unmuted. I mean, you on the mic. And don't you speak and drop the mic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she muted herself. <laughs> Girl, you, you got the wrong profession. You need to be a comedian. <laughs> so, all right, anybody got any questions for it? Or any thoughts you want to shine? Anything stand out to you? I mean, I, I'm ready. Um, what do we know, first of all, those of you who take notes, you can start writing this down. What do we know that's going on with Paul? And we've said it before, we'll echo it again and consistently. Paul, when he teaches the book of Romans, he's dealing with some new Christians in an environment that's very rough over in Rome and all the laws they have and, and the rules they have and the, the principles they don't have, <laughs> the lifestyle they don't have. And, and so Paul had to deal with that Roman church with what they were dealing with. And then Paul comes here into 1 Corinthians and he doesn't write the same thing that he's writing in Romans because over there, uh, Lady Johnson, there was a, he, Paul is teaching the people where they are. And that's important, everybody. When you're teaching, you could have a ton of notes to preach on. And when you're preaching or teaching, it's imperative that when you look around the room and you kind of scope and get a feel for the room, you don't have to say everything on your paper. Speak to the people where they are. Allow God to adjust you. So when you're ministering to people, it's the same way. Listen to them. Where are they coming from? Paul is hearing what's going on in Corinthians. Or better yet, back it up. He heard what was going on in Romans. So he wrote him a letter. And when we come here, what do we see? Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant, of not knowing that is how that, that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Who is he talking about here? Anybody want to give it a shot? Who is he talking about? He said, our fathers who was under the clouds and passed through the sea. And so someone reading this might not know what that means. That's why. Anybody? Okay. Okay. The kitchens. The people of Israel. Okay. Let's talk to the people of Israel. And you remember at what time this happened to the people of Israel? I recall. I know when they were exiting, when they were leaving Egypt. Correct. Exactly. So again, those of you that are, uh, you may not know the Bible that much. You come here, don't even worry about running from that. No one's going to get deep. What we're just saying is he just said, so when you read the Bible and you see things, well, what does that mean? Always keep asking those kind of questions. It is nothing wrong with you asking questions. It's everything right when you ask. Well, you don't let me ask, ask questions. Keep on asking. 
keep on asking. That's how you learn. I learned by raising my hand. People say, well, you, because you know all that. The only reason you know is because you raised your hand and you asked somebody that didn't know. <laughs> Ain't nothing deep to it, everybody, when you study. And so when we get here, Paul in chapter number 10, he's showing how Israel experienced, <coughs> excuse me, some of the same things in the Old Testament, or what we call, what it's known as, the old documents, old covenant is the actual, it's an actual covenant in the Old Testament, and there's a covenant in the New Testament. Old Testament, we know, was type and shadows. We didn't understand why a ram was important that was caught in that bush. We didn't understand what Boaz was doing, amen, with Ruth and Naomi. We didn't understand what a kinsman redeemer. It was just, oh, it's just a culture thing. And we didn't understand that, as you said, Pastor Joe, when they were, amen, by the, the sea, all of a sudden, the Lord had the ocean in front of them and behind them was this light, this, this fire. And behind that fire was, was the Egyptians. And right at that pinnacle point, you've got the water, New Testament baptism. Behind them, you have that uh, fire, Holy Spirit for the New Testament believer. And behind them was Egypt. And what is behind is Egypt behind them. Egypt represented sin in the Old Testament. We understand this when we get to the New Testament. And again, those of you watching, you didn't know some of this, I would say, you know, you got things called types and shadows. It looks like one thing, but it applies. It can apply to something else. In one Old Testament, it means one thing. But in the New Testament, you know, it got a fuller meaning. You cannot interpret the Bible, whether you go, some people go strictly New Testament. The problem with that is it makes no sense. What is going on in the New Testament if you don't have an understanding of the connection with the Old Covenant? And again, what does a ram mean? Well, we know in the New Testament it's pointing to Jesus. But we didn't understand all what was going on. In the Old Testament, there was great stories. Some people say narratives, whatever you want to call it. However, when you get to the New Testament, it it's explained some. Some people used to say Old Testament concealed, New Testament revealed. Same concept. Okay. And so Paul is saying to me, we get in verse number one. Okay. So they went under the cloud. Okay. And they passed through the sea. Now he's not referring to the Corinthians, Paul is explaining here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 about Israel. So he's showing what Israel went through also by way, birth of a plan of salvation. Again, you those watching, you want to write that down. This is like a plan. This is a plan of salvation. Now, how did God save them? Look at verse number two. And they were all, now he brings in the word baptized. Okay, in the Greek word being baptismo. Okay, but not baptismo, but I think it's zeo, zo, baptismo. Okay, and they were all, now look at what it said. What is interesting here, Pastor Sailor, and were all baptized, all of them. And remember, when you get in the book of Acts, chapter number two, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all people, all of them got baptized. There was never, you know, a cherry picking. Well, I love God, but I don't need to do this. No, when I do it, it's an act of faith and obedience to what God has put in his book. Any thoughts so, so far, Pastor Saylor, you want to share some thoughts? Not now. Thank okay. You. All right. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, as we continue on, so it says, and we're all baptized. That's verse number two. And were all baptized unto whom? Moses. Isn't it interesting? It didn't say they was baptized unto God. Well, that's what got me when I went to school. You know, in school, here's a person, um, you know, that believe in a different kind of faith, you know, 
Uh, but hey, it's, it was cool. <laughs> I didn't care long. You know, they had all kind of faiths up in there. And, and then he said, and this is what really got me. He said, the reason they baptize in Jesus' name, they always baptize in the name of their master. I mean, I was blown away when I heard that. So you understand that who was leading Israel? It tells us in verse 2. Who was leading Israel in verse number 2? Moses. Now, I'm not saying they were baptized in Moses' name. I'm saying here, the scriptures say they were all baptized unto Moses. Now, they are workers now for the kingdom. Okay? Moses in the cloud and also the sea. You got the cloud. See that, Pastor Joe? They were baptized in the cloud and the sea. And so here Paul is bringing in a, he's juxtaposing, if you will, side by side, how Israel was a type of, type of salvation going through the Red Sea and also with the cloud covering over them. And then remember, it was, there, it was cloud by day and it was fire by night. This was a form of baptism. And when they went through the Red Sea, okay, many believe it was, you know, millions or so people, millions of people, five, six million. And whatever the case may be, but if you play with the numbers, one writer said it had to be, even if they were in rows, it had to be at least 5,000 per row. That God did a great thing, opening it up. And they went on dry land. And when they got to the other side, that was a form of baptism. When the, and so that's why when the Jewish people get baptized, if you do some study, they would go, I think Johnson, you saw this somewhere too. They would step down in the baptismal pool. And once they stepped down in the pool, they would walk to the other side and come out, which represented a new life. So Jewish people. So when Paul writes in these books, he's talking about people that only had the practice of being baptized. They had no other, they knew this was their custom. We have removed baptism. We, many people, when I say we, I don't include me. So, amen. But people have removed the baptism out of the New Testament and delivered it to a prayer. But Jewish people, they say, well, this is what the Jewish taught. No, they would, they would have never gone that route because it wasn't their practice. We changed it because we made it more for whatever reason. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I just say we see here it was a form of baptism and we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. The cloud represents the spirit. The sea represents water. Those you're watching, you can write down John, the gospel of John, chapter number three, beginning verse number three, all the way to verse number eight. John chapter number three, okay, the gospel of John chapter three and verse three through eight. And you'll see Jesus teaching John uh, Nicodemus about what? Being born again, but of two parts. One baptism, two parts, water and spirit. Water and spirit. You need both. And he said, and when you experience this, you're being born from where? Above. Now, Bertha, why is that important? Because who baptized Israel in the ocean? God. He. So they were born from above, from God. God did the salvation plan. They couldn't open that sea. They didn't put the fire behind them. God did it. And there's a form, I'm about to speak in tongues right now. It's a form of baptism, form of salvation. And so Paul takes the Corinthians on a journey to share with them the story of Israel so they can understand what it is they have also. Okay, I hope that makes sense if you're watching. Any thoughts? Anybody want to chime in anything I've said thus far or something else you may Another nugget you may see. I I think it's great how he chose fire, and I was just thinking about how the Holy Ghost has said it's it's like set fire upon them, and when you people receive the Holy Ghost, 
can it be also that representation of the fire of, of the fourth, of what's to come of the Holy Ghost? Because you got the water and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But now remember, when, and, and that's a great point. Remember, Joel spoke to us in chapter two, beginning in verse 28, Bertha. And he starts speaking to us about this promise. One day, 120 of them over in uh, uh, Jerusalem in an upper room, here comes the Holy Spirit. See, so God did not change the plan of salvation. He unfolded it to us, what the plan of salvation is. Praise the Lord, uh, Pastor Aaron, good to see you. And yes, woman of God, go ahead. Uh, and my Bible, uh, 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 verse 4, it said, and all of them drank the same miraculous water, for they all drank from the miraculous rock that traveled with them, and the rock, and that rock was Christ. Right, yeah. that's, that's verse number verse four. Five said, yeah. yeah, after this, God was not pleased with most of them. Mm -hmm. Right. Although they got, he, it was a form of baptism, he wasn't pleased with their behavior. The behavior, okay. Right. See, although they got saved, that God was still having to be patient with them to deal with their transformation. And that's why we as believers have to be more loving to people that come to Jesus and not tell them the stuff we, I can't tell everybody what I know. Sometimes somebody say, well, you're agreeing with it. I'm not agreeing with sin, but they're not ready for me. All they're ready for is, you know, say, how you doing? That's about all they can have. They don't know. They don't even know how to find Genesis. Come on. People, I didn't know what Genesis was, but I knew never to read Revelation. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I guess I, I knew what Genesis was because I knew in school that was the beginning. But my, but we get the point, and you're exactly right, uh, Pastor Sailor. In verse number two, we say, and they were all baptized in verse three, and did all men eat the same spiritual meat? They all ate the same spiritual meat. And so we're seeing words that Paul is putting here, amen, but it's pointing us somewhere. But he's giving them a history lesson about Israel. And I'm going to go to the scripture Pastor Sailor just read. And they all drank of the same spiritual drink. Great point. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And he says, oh, by the way, do you know who that rock is? No. When they... When they hit the rock, the water came out of the rock. You don't know where that came. They drank that living water. That was living water. Look at the typology there in the, in the old documents. The typology has been used. And who was that rock, Pastor Sailor? They said that rock was Christ. It was Christ. And so that's what Paul is trying to get them to understand. After some of the things they, they went through, Paul is trying to get them to understand their connection to Israel. Just like Israel had to get saved. Where did they come from? Where did Israel come from? They came from Egypt. Place of sin. They came from a world of sin. And so what God did is took them out of that world. Just like what? He takes us out of that world. But he has to teach us how to be saved. So Paul in here in a minute going to show me about communion. And he's showing them. Let's go on. All right. Any questions from anybody? Any thoughts you want to share so far? Uh, this is good. I'm enjoying this. Yes. Um, in verse 5 and 6, it's basically saying that you had said it. You said it's like us being saved. We came out of sin and gave our life to Christ. But then in my Bible, it says a warning. It's like us. Even though we're saved, we have to be careful that we don't go into wilderness. And I was looking at wilderness. It says uncultivated, something that's not done. And if we don't cultivate the word, if we don't read the word, if we don't cultivate the spiritual man in us, we can become in a, a spiritual wilderness. Okay. And things can overtake us with sin, fornication, idolatry, and our interest in doing the things of the world will become more if we don't keep our spiritual man cultivated. Good, good word. And so those who are watching, you know, that was really good. And, and these uh, individuals are very sound people. And that's why we come as a team, not as individual. 
uh, I know I'm the leader, but hey, I realize something. I, I'm, I'm, I may be a leader, but I can't do it all. Uh, and, and God doesn't build a church that way. It takes the whole body. So uh, excellent point there. Uh, so now he's getting into, he, he's warning them. You want to write this down, everybody, in this scripture. He's warning them, not only that although God saved them, Pastor Joe, he come right up and warn them about how they fail. And to, to get me as an instruction that they don't fall. So he's going to teach them some things coming in according to their traditions. Paul will address that. But many of them in verse 5, many of them God was not pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Okay. Now the question is, how? Now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. Now the question I put out to everybody to the best of your memory, recollect, okay, our qu my question would be, what did they do that was so displeasing and evil in God's sight? See, they did some stuff. Uh, I mean, I, I read ahead, but I'm assuming it, it's verse 7. Ye idolaters, some of that is written. People sat down to eat and drink and rose to play, commit fornication. Um, so it, I guess the the... The answer to that is in a couple of next verses there. But some things of that, um, those things are some of the things that led them to fall and that they were getting into. Um, I, I remember, you know, when Moses went up into the went up into the mount, when he came back, they had already made a golden calf. Um, <laughs> so yeah. things like that. But it just pretty much, you know, I doubt, you know, having other things that are in their lives that are set before God, whether it be physical or, you know, mental or. Right. I always said, I said, God, either Moses had 20, 20 vision or the mountain wasn't that high and far away where the, where the tree was burning. You know, I always watch when they show um, the 10 commandments, they show Moses looking at him and Joshua looking at, wow, a tree burned. Well, first of all, Joshua, as the scripture said, wasn't with Moses <laughs> when that happened. He hadn't showed up. That's TV did that. Uh, but when you look at Moses, he looks up there and he could see the tree not burning. Yet when Moses birthed climbing, he's climbing up this hill and going to different levels. And then finally, when the tree, Moses gets to the tree, he walked about 20 steps or 20 feet. And there was the tree in the cliff, in the cliff of a mountain. You couldn't even see that down there. So it was just TV dramatics. I don't know how he saw it, but I always say he thought he had good vision or he was on the mountain, but how high was the mountain? Or he just had great, great eyesight. <laughs> I don't know. That's just how my brain think when I see the scripture. But when you see this, he said one of the problems was, and you were right, Pastor Aaron, idolatry. Idolatry. Now, for you that are watching, that are on the screen, Write down on the screen, what is idolatry? Tell us what you know idolatry is. Uh, even if you know it and if 10 of you said it. Okay, there you go. Uh, someone already have, have done it. Someone else, some of you others that can do it. Go ahead and write down, amen, uh, what idolatry is. You know, um, just so others, when they look this, can see we are always on the same page. And we know what idolatry is. But he said in verse number seven, neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. So it wasn't all of them, Bertha, but it was some of them. Okay. The people sat down to eat and to drink and they rose up to play. They threw a party. Where did they get all this from? Egypt. They, learned, they picked up these habits from Egypt. Now they've been delivered. They see all these miracles. They see Egypt and Pharaoh them get swallowed up in the ocean. We see these miracles. Yet still again, you're right, Mr. Peggy, you're exactly right. Uh, twice. Idolatry and sexual immorality. And that's what the world now is we, Pastor Joe, we worship the body. We worship the body. Okay. False worship of gods, okay, and Sister Dana 
Amen. Dana, good to see you. I was looking for you this week when I was driving. I said, I know Dana's here. She's coming today. Amen. I was looking for you on Sunday. Uh, just miss you. That's all. And so, again, when we go here, neither you be a idolater. Don't do what they did. As it's written, the people sat down to eat and to drink, and rose up to play, start having a good time, if you want to call it that in the world, and which they picked up another bad habit. Uh, well, not picked up a habit because they knew the problem. He said they were having sexual relationships outside of the marriage. And the marriage, Israel, the way they married was male and female. That was the only marriage that was recognized. Um, okay. And so we see, we come here, so, uh, and, and neither commit fornication and then, and fell in one day, in one day, in one day. Day, Bertha. How many people got killed, everybody, in one day? You see that in verse number eight. It tells us how many people were killed. You have to unmute, though. 23,000. In one day, three and 20,000. Look how many. 23,000 people in one day died because of what? Sin. Sin, fornication. Fornication was a form of also idolatry, worshiping the other person, worshiping their body. And there was sin. They paid a price for it. So one thing about God is so judicious. He gives me a chance to repent of my ways. But if I keep playing with it, there's a price to be paid. I mean, case in point, if you keep doing petty things, Eventually, you're going to do break into somebody's house or do something and go to jail. You'll eventually get caught for that. They got caught. They got caught. Sometimes we don't think God is paying attention, and he's right there in our business. He sees everything. And one thing about God is so interesting is he always, always, always put people business in the Bible. Nobody's stuff was hid. Because he wanted you to know if you did good or if you was doing something wrong. We all talk about David because we know what he did because it was in the book. Okay. Now, number nine, neither let us corrupt Christ. And some of them also tempted and was destroyed of the serpent. Now, what is he talking about that? Being someone being destroyed of the serpent. Again, some may be watching, don't know what that is. Anybody want to shine the light? What are you talking about? Uh, uh, that particular scripture, what serpent there was disturbed, destroyed of serpents. What is he referring to? Anybody want to try it? Okay, Bertha. Would that be demons? No, no, but that's good. That was good, though, in this particular text. But that's good. Anybody else want to try? Remember when they kept complaining? and That was one of their biggest problems, Bertha. They complained about everything. And I'm telling you, people are like that today. They can read what Israel did, but when they say something, it ain't bad. But the problem is they still are complaining whether they want to receive it or not. Still complaining because they don't see no good. And I always see what's wrong in something. And so when we see here, they was destroyed of serpents. Remember, they got sin. They went so bad. Remember, do y'all remember that the snakes came and started biting them? And then Moses wrapped something on the cross and put it and pulled, held it up to the people. And as long as they looked on it, they could, they would live. Y'all remember that? It's in the Bible. It's in the old doc, old uh, document, Old Testament. Amen. So it's modern idolatry. Yes, yeah, someone put it in the in the uh, uh, chat. It's exactly like it's modern. It was the idolatry. They're worshiping the body. What do we see today? People worship the body. I mean, some of these videos, they tell you what they really believe. Somebody said, well, I don't really mean that. <laughs> okay. Why don't you study the origin where some of these things come from, what they're doing? And you'll see these people doing it because they know something that you don't, you may not want to know. That's for real. Because a lot of people are into idolatry and sexual worship and all this other stuff. That's why I said fornication. And then he comes, verse number 10, he said, neither murmur ye. Now, 
look at what he's talking about. He wasn't talking about just you doing something with your hand or your feet or whatever. He said, Don't neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed. Of what? Destroyed of the destroyer. Now, murmuring, he said, is a problem. Israel was in sexual worship, they were in idolatry, and they was talking, they couldn't, they didn't show their faith. They was complaining about the circumstance. They just complain. Some people get up in the morning and all they want to do is talk about what's wrong. <laughs> I, I was walking this morning and talking to someone and they started saying something. I said, well, you know, you know me, I just want to hear what's good because I always hear the bad. And, you know, I choose what I choose for my life. And I choose, Pastor Joe, to hear what's good. And I protect that. Because I have that right. If a person, all you want to do is find fault, go ahead. I just wasn't raised that way. And we both need to understand we weren't raised the same. <laughs> Brother Joe, if I'm on your team, I'm going to look at you and say, are you serious? You want to win? And we go for it. And you tell me the same. And I'm telling you, yes, sir, I want to win. And that's what you want to know. You're on a team with winners. Israel complained. They murmured about any, well, we got too much food. We can't eat all this stuff. He said, only take enough, right? And guess what they did? They filled the bags up. And they got cursed for that to the point they got sick, eating so much. He said, because the, there wasn't a faith, and that's a lack of faith. When there's abundance coming your way, the scripture in Malachi chapter 3, everybody, Malachi chapter 3, tell that when God opens up the windows of heaven, you don't have room to receive it. Meaning what God bless you with isn't all for you. Start giving stuff away. It's not for you. Everything is not for you that God give you. He bless you enough for you. And then you turn around and you give. And it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Y'all remember that in the scripture? Okay. And so someone put in the in the chat said one, money, two was jobs, three physical appearance, four entertainment, six, me five, sex, six comfort, seven phone and technology, eight family and, and influence. And, and I'm, I'm just reading something out of, in the chat. And it's true, exactly true. You know, we have to understand we make the same mistakes that they made back then. Here Israel made the mistakes. And then the Corinthians, he said, you're making the same mistakes. And now we're reading their story. And in spite of we had Israel's story and these new believers in Corinth story, we today have read everybody's story and still make the same mistakes. Over. Wow. Wow. We've read it, we see it, and we still make the same mistakes. God is a God about lifestyle. No matter what I read... It's not what I believe. It's what he says. He's a God of cleaning up lifestyle. Once a liar, don't lie no more. Once a curse, don't curse no more. Once a fornicator, don't, I'm not a fornicator. Somebody said, once a drug addict, no longer a drug addict. Used to drink, don't drink anymore. God looks at lifestyle. The anointing flows in your life. We start living better. We all hear what they say. But God has set a standard. You say, well, that's old stuff. This is new stuff. <laughs> no. The foundation shall never be changed. And you build from the foundation, from the, the substratum is the foundation of something. And you build on a solid foundation, everybody. You don't go and tear the foundation. We're going to rebuild. This is already laid. But Pastor Joe, they were making the same mistakes. And Paul said to them, I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help you, Paul said. Live this thing. And sometimes we need God's help. Say, so God, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. But they murmured, they complained. So now the Bible tells me, think on these things. Whatsoever things are lovely. 
whatsoever things of good report and so forth and so on. I should think on these things. Hallelujah. And so I have to, Bertha, fill my mind with good thoughts. So in Numbers, uh, Pastor Sandra put it on there. Right. Numbers, those of you that are watching, you can write it down. Numbers 21 and verse 9. Okay, regarding the bronze serpent attached to the pole. And that's the same concept where they get, if you go see a medical, uh, the medical brand, that's the medical brand, the same thing. It's no secret what it is. It's the same. If you look at a medical, you'll see that snake wrapped around a cross. It's the same thing. That's where they get it from. Okay, and then Mr. Peggy, she chimed in also and said, serpent on the pole, it's a medical symbol. As I just said, I didn't even see it, but it's so true. Yet we see all this still what today. Any thoughts from anyone so far? Any thoughts? You want to share some thoughts? No, I don't want to. No thoughts. Well, I'm going to take a little break. I'll be right back. Let's get back to verse number 11. Amen. We just thank God for those opportunities that, um, amen, God blesses us to be able to tithe and be able to give. So as the instructions that you read earlier, if the Lord will lead you into giving, amen, and being a blessing. We're doing a lot of work today. I'm so grateful for all that work going on, huh, Pastor Sailor? I mean, uh, uh, pa uh, Pastor Kitchen? Hey, my goodness, she was down there today. I mean, we don't have an office anymore. <laughs> We can't, we have no back room anymore, but, but uh, at some point it's going to be spectacular. Amen. Whatever God does is spectacular is what I'm saying. Amen. Let's go on. All right. So all this in verse 11, all these happen. Oh, somebody's unmuted. Who's unmuted? Joe? Yes. No, I was just, that scripture you that, that Pastor Sandra read, I never thought that was awesome because when you look it up today, that symbol of medicine, it does have that serpent and that um, that serpent around the, the pole. And in reading that scripture, it says that when they got bitten, Moses held up that, that brass symbol of that serpent and they were healed. Was so healed. I was like, wow. <laughs> it, it's the most unusual thing, how the snake represented Christ. And that many people have asked that question. I'm not asking that question, but many people have asked that question. Why is it symbolic for Christ? That's another deep Bible class, uh, but is it, but it's actually true. You know, it's amazing. The moment they look, the moment they look at that 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 that, that, that serpent on the cross, man, they were healed. You got to keep your eye on Jesus. Is what we learn from that, brothers and sisters. You have to keep your eye on Jesus. Amen. And so he go when we go on. It says, verse eleven. All these things happen unto them for an example, and they are written of admonition or encouragement uh, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let us uh, that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. So be careful. Be careful how you walk. Now, this was interesting, verse 19, uh, 13. This was interesting. 
There has no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able, but with the temptation, but with, now look at that, but with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to even bear it. Interesting, isn't it? And so when I say that these temptations are just too great, the scripture telling me it's nothing new because it's the same demon. All right, Bertha, you must, you have a question. Oh, okay, she mutes herself quickly. <laughs> she said, not me, not me. You know, Aaron would say, pick me. This not, not me, not me. <laughs> Amen. And so the Bible let us know whatever we're going through, somebody else went through it also. But they got they had the victory. So what does that tell me? That God embedded in every single person, knowing that sin was coming, knowing the devil was going to do what he's going to do. But God already made an escape before we went in. And that Jesus was slain before the foundations of the earth. But God is so just. And this is what's mind-boggling. He ingrained in us, if I can use that word, something called free will that even with the Holy Spirit even with baptism even with the Bible even with prayer and coaching and preaching and teaching and the list goes on and 66 wonderful books I still don't have to read it because I've been given free will and this is a gift from God. And so when God saved me, he saves you. He saves all of us. It's a gift. But our free will with the Holy Ghost, with baptism, with all the preaching we've heard, free will is the big deal. Free will. I think my brother's trying to get me. Uh, okay, he went to call on the phone. Hey, we we on the phone, bro. Uh, so you live, and a lot of people watching, listening to you. <laughs> so, uh, you on the phone, brother? We 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 got to talk Bible right now. <laughs> so, Amen. So again, verse thirteen here in First Corinthians chapter ten. All of us have a temptation. God makes a way of us to get out. So, wherefore in verse fourteen, wherefore my dearly beloved. He says, now, look at free will. What does he say here? So now, what do you do, Bertha? He says, up to you to use your free will to flee. Look at what he said. You don't have to. There is a price for it. But you have free will, and you flee. He put the onus on us. So we cannot go and say, well, God, remember Adam, Aaron? God, it was the woman that you gave me. And Eve said, she didn't take ownership either. She said, Lord, is that devil? The Lord didn't even address the devil in that conversation. Why? He already knew he was no good. <laughs> he already knew. And so, so, Wherefore, did it be love? You flee. Use your free will to do right. Use your free will to repent. Use your free will to confess. No matter how much Holy Spirit we have, no matter how much and that we've been baptized, we still been given free will. Come on, somebody. Now that is so simple, but has a lot of weight. That, well, I'm going to just never sin again. Be careful because you have free will. However, God gave me this gift of free will for me to choose what to do. And Adam and Eve, guess what? Had free will and they 
abuse the free will, and that's where the fall comes. Jesus restores the church, and all of a sudden he's saying to them, now you guys have free will. There's nothing that you're dealing with that you can't come out of. Lord, then if that's the case, I want to say to you honestly, I need your help. Because I can't speak for no one on the screen, but I can't speak for me. I need God's help. Amen. I need his help. Because sometimes we are blaming the devil and we don't realize, come on now, it's our free will. Mm. We blame the devil for every single thing. And it's our free will. It's our free will. I use my free will to get up and go to church. It's my free will. But we ignore many times that we still have a free will. God help us. And Mr. I didn't even know Mr. Peggy, we were on point. She said the same thing. We have the free will to do right or wrong. She said, I choose to flee. <laughs> Come on now. I choose to get out of here, man. But that's exactly right, Mr. Peggy. Amen. Almost finished, everyone. Almost there. I'm not going to do the whole thing. So I speak as, speak to wise men. I speak as to wise men. Judge you what I say. So I'm speaking to you like you, you got some sense. I'm using it in our terms, obviously. He said, the cup of blessing, which we bless, is not the communion of the blood of Christ. The bread which we break it is not the communion of the body of Christ. Okay, For we being many of one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that bread. Amen. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifice, partaker of the altar. Paul's given a parallel here. Amen. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not we each sacrifice partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idols is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. And he's showing them now that their sacrifice, that you're seeing the, these uh, Gentiles, ethne, the goyans, what they're doing is they're offering these things up to, because uh, uh, it's idolatry, they're offering up to an idol. And many cultures even today still do this. But we understand, he said, again, back to verse 20, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. He never said don't have fellowship with them. He said, don't have fellowship with the devils. Now, we never really hear the term demons and all that in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. It comes to our attention what the real problem is. They thought the problem was Egypt. Jesus showed up and said, the, oh, it's the Romans. Deliver us from those Romans. And that's why they wanted Jesus. Well, what did you come to do? They didn't get Jesus. He said, I'm coming to save you deliver you spiritually. And then I give you Holy Ghost and I give you authority and power and I wash away your sins, but I never took away your free will because then you will become spiritual puppets and the devil could use that against you. But you still, so he tell them, you flee. That's what Minister Peggy said. You flee. You choose to get up Get out of here. And that's what, again, I put that back. We got to flee. We have to, we have the free will to do right or wrong. And this is what she chooses. Okay. Any thoughts, everybody, as we get ready to uh, land this plane? We're not going to go through every single verse. Let's kind of uh, uh, hear some of your thoughts and, and we'll be signing out in a few minutes. Amen. Anybody want to share some thoughts about this or anything in the Old uh, Testament, kind of old documents, kind of stir your blood? Yes, Pastor Aaron. I was I'll say that it's interesting that you know um the Lord or the Lord uses Paul to give them a real world example um of something that's happened before. You know, a lot of times these individuals get super spiritual, but they gave them an example of hey, this is this is what has happened before with the people of Israel, something mm -hmm. that they can physically attach to, like, oh, 
yeah, those guys over there, this is what happened to them, which is, um, you know, especially for us nowadays, I think uh, just been learning that if I can attach the real world parables or the, or I mean, I can attach the, the Bible parables or the Bible examples to something real world, I can understand it more. So I think, yeah. I think that is important. Um, and it's good. It's a good. It's a, it's a good example. It's a it's a good way of learning. So, yeah. All right, Tucky. Oh no, that's Rocky. I'm sure. Yeah, that's Rocky. Yeah. So, exactly right. Uh, that 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 free will is something else. It's very powerful. Anybody else? Uh, thank you, there, Pastor Aaron. As we're closing, anybody got some shine some light on some of the stuff we talked about? I mean that we discussed. No. So, uh, you know, it's, it's good teaching that Paul is teaching them, um, showing them the example of what Israel, as you said, Aaron, here's what happened to them. But guess what? It's happening to you. And because of your free will. And, and I just, again, one of the things that kind of sometimes really irritate me, Aaron, I must confess that, really irritate me when people keep blaming the devil for everything. You don't take ownership that you messed up. Yes, Pastor Bill, Pastor Joe. I was just thinking about that scripture that says we blame the devil, but the scripture in James says we're drawn away by our own lust. Say that again. Woo. You put the scripture, you brought James in. That's a good thing. That's exactly right. You know, you, you Jesus bring a peace in something, but at some point, I mean, what does it take to start saying, man, I'm messing up. I've changed, but I, I know there's no way God like the way I'm doing what I'm doing. And that's when you start, that's part of the growth process is con dealing with you. You're really, really growing the less you say about people and you talk more about yourself and how God's fixing you. Leave people alone. Yes, Pastor Joe, I see you still uh, about Amen. ready to drop something. Now get your pencil <laughs> and ready. He's going to drop something on us now. <laughs> Amen. No, I like uh, verse 13 because a lot of times when you're talking to people, people are always saying, uh, no one understands. Nobody understands what I'm going through or what I'm dealing with. And verse 13 tells us that there has no <laughs> temptation taken you, but such as is common to, to man. You know, we all dealing with different things. We all going through different things, you know, and as Aaron said earlier, we got examples that the apostles given us of what our brothers and sisters in Christ went through in the Old Testament, the New Testament, but we just have to read it. We have to meditate on it and give it to God and let God deliver us. Amen. Yeah, amen. I won't add to the scripture, but I'm just playing when I say this, okay? Because you make me think about it. So you got the Old Testament, you got the New Testament, and now you got your testament. <laughs> you got to deal with your life, man. You talk about everybody else, Bertha. You got to deal with you. You got your own testament. And so when you was talking that, I'm not saying that's biblical. I'm just saying it made me think of that. I said, yeah, but I got my own testament. Me. I got to deal with me now. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so I just say to us, uh, that was a real, really, really solid uh, there. Come anyone else want to shine some light in, on something of. Uh, this is good. Your, your input is so valuable, but your input is very good. Anybody got any thoughts or we'll come to the conclusion, but we're grateful all of you that are here tonight. Amen. We want you, as you see below, amen, subscribing to YouTube. Amen. You can just go there now and just type in a few. Amen. And we'll see, they, obviously they see you something. We'll build that. Uh, grateful what God is doing to us as leaders. He's dealing with us as leaders now uh, in Pasadena. And there'll be some changes, some upgrades that he's doing. He's, he's working on the property, but he's also working on us. Look at how long it's taken to, to work on the property, Bertha. So how long do you think it's taken to work on us? You know, 
And sometimes the Bible says you go back to your mess. Joe, you go back to your mess, Eric, which you guys are talking about. Why? For some reason, you like the taste. But then the Bible said that the young man, uh, when he came to himself, he remembered who he was. And sometimes we have to remember, who am I? I'm a child of God. Lord, you know what? I'm sorry. That's really stupid. And it's better to be more transparent with God so you can hear yourself talk to God, knowing that you have a real relationship. Well, God, you know what I meant. Yeah, you know what you meant. But you want to, that's why repentance, as we see on the screen, that's why repentance, when you start telling the truth about yourself. Oh, but if I say that, I'm going to hurt. No, if you don't say it, it's going to cause you problems. And so repentance is a viewing of your actions, how you feel, you know, and your regret for what you've done. And you repent. It's, it's where God dealing with your heart and like, uh oh. And that's why people say, you know, they're making good, bad, and bad becomes good. The things that are good for us, we say these are bad things. The things that are really bad for us, we're giving it praise and saying, this is good. This is our free will, our free choice. I want my free choice. But what, what about mine? You want yours, but I want mine. And the man next to me want his. The person across the street want theirs. Just because they don't agree with you. So, oh, we're not talking about free will no more. We're talking about you want your say, and you want to demand everybody else shut up and agree with you. Are they wrong? <laughs> That's not the real world because they have, God gave them something you can't take from them. It's called a free will. That free will, Pastor Beverly, coupled with the Holy Ghost and the baptism and the word of God and prayer and fast, my goodness. And that's what Minister Peggy said. That's a big thing. And that's why if you, wherever you are and you're watching, this is your first time or second or third, but you really still don't understand. That's what God talks about in John, as you see on the screen, John chapter 3, verse 3 through 5. And you go all the way to verse number 8. But it says about being born again. First step again, as we said a few minutes ago. What did I say? Repent. Second thing is the water baptism. Now, which one's first? Repentance is first. But then he said water baptism. Jesus' name. He said be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, which one comes first? The Holy Ghost or the baptism? Doesn't matter if you read the scripture. I remember when I first came to Pasadena, they were really, oh, you got to be baptized first. I said, what's that at? They were showing me scripture. I said, that's good. You show me what you want me to see. Now show me where else in the scripture. Did anyone ever get the Holy Ghost? They knew it. You know how sometimes you see the scripture, Joe, but you just didn't remember it. And we can't read. I said, what about Acts chapter number 19, verse 1 through 6? Well, who was you baptized unto? Have you seen the Holy Ghost since you believe? No. Well, who was you baptized unto? John? Oh, okay. Well, John, he talked about one coming. And he laid hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost. And once he received the Holy Ghost, he didn't stop them from being baptized. Wait a minute. They got the Holy Ghost first. It doesn't matter. But the Bible says that you must be born again, water and spirit, be filled with the Holy Ghost. So if you're watching this your first time, here's some scriptures you can share with your friend. Talk it over. Uh but this is what the scripture teaches us concerning salvation. Amen. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, amen, there's an initial sign. It's not the only sign, but it is the beginning. You now know he's inside because the Bible said, with stammering lips, they're in Isaiah, stammering lips and other tongues will he speak to his people. And then we see it in, in Joel chapter number two. Again, as we said earlier, beginning in verse number 28. And then we come here in Acts chapter number 2. And there are 120 people in the upper room. The Holy Ghost came, fell on them, and they all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. Every single one of them. Not, not one of them. Not two of them. Not just the men. There were women up there. It didn't come to age. None of that meant anything. The only thing meant something is that they all received the Holy Ghost. And they all start speaking in tongues. And the scripture lets us know. And we cannot take our doctrine, our, 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 our methodology and our doctrines that we have in our religion and change what the word says. But people do it every day. But the scripture tells you, they say, well, tongues going to cease. When is it going to cease, brother? Because the Holy Ghost keeps falling. 
Do you think everybody that got the Holy Ghost, they're all crazy? They're making it up? How's a man in Taiwan and a man in the Philippines and, and a man in, 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 in Turkey and, and, and a woman in Russia and so forth and so on, they all get the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. They don't even know each other. Because the Holy Ghost is real. No matter who, who it touches, it gives you an initial sign of speaking in tongues. And you want to exercise your heavenly language. And I want to encourage you, if you want to grow, continue to grow. Amen. Soon we'll be reestablishing our, uh, our system of, of training uh, on Sunday morning, system training new people. Our discipleship class is coming. Our new website is coming. Uh, you know, new building. Now, we don't want new everything and still be old flesh. What we're not going to do, what you ain't going to tell me we're going to do, that's not pleasing to God. And God is dealing with me about changing me. And I got to change. He said, when they come to my house, I mean, it's not words I hear, but you feel it in your heart. When they come to my house, don't run them out. You need to change. I'm not sending people to you for you to kill them and you to discourage them. Amen. And so we're working on changing our culture. I wouldn't teach this if it wasn't a problem, Bertha. Telling on us is like any pastor would tell on this congregation. It's who we've been. And we say, Lord, when they come in, I can't just go shake hands with my friends. I got to go to these people because God sent them. People know you by their love, not by you giving. You give me rules and regulation. Joe, you give me rules and regulation. I'm going to challenge your brain and your scripture now. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to see what it takes to break you, see how far you can run with it. That's just the way praying to work. I ain't say it was right. I'm just telling you what a person would do. And they do it to us all the time when we are outreach. They do it every time. They keep challenging you. See, where are you going to break? So you need to learn the word. And that's why I say, amen. Um, I see your daughter said, go, daddy. Go, daddy. <laughs> you see, your, your baby said, uh, you go, daddy, and minister Aaron. Okay. Amen. And then minister, hey, we're going to miss big say, let's keep moving up. Praise God. That's exactly right. Because we're not changing the building and not change us. And that's why you, you see, I'm saying it over and over and over. Why? Because that's the only way you help people grow. You got to be repetitive. And so I'm grateful. Those are the plans of salvation God has given you. Amen. Uh, again, if you want uh, to continue to grow, although you can register at the website, sofpasadena.org, um, you're going to see a whole different change. And it's going to be tapered down. And, and our focus is investing in people. Investing in people, in children. Amen. I want to go eat with you, but I also want to outreach with you. Amen. And I'm grateful as we come into uh, this Harvest Crusade air. Uh, I got me two today, uh, yesterday. Got me two yesterday. All I did was send Aaron, Pastor Aaron, a little email to some people say, hey, this is what's going on in October. I want to invite you to this wonderful day. And they said, I said, what? Send me your address. And they started sending me their addresses. Somebody would say, we can't do this. And I can say, that is not true. The problem isn't the Bible, Joe. It's not the Holy Spirit. Is we are exercising our free will. Watch this. You ready for this, Joe? Watch this. We're exercising our free will to fail. Let it simmer. When God tells you to have faith for the moment, Every moment we exist, have faith in that moment. Wow. Have faith in that. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence is coming. Things not even seen, but it's coming. Because I'm changing. I'm changing. And the more we let God change us, we'll start. To, he'll touch our hearts. Oh, I need to be a little bit more soft here. I need to be a little bit more firm there. I need not to do this to the people. God needs to pray more. And God starts showing me because he know I love him. So God bless you, everybody. Thank you for coming. We are so grateful that you joined us tonight. Amen. Uh, any closing thoughts for any of you or you all good? You all good? You ready to go eat your collard greens and call it a night or something? Amen. <laughs>
Uh, we oh, you came back. I saw my screen was stopped. And did you guys screen stop or was it just maybe it was just mine? You guys all stopped. It was just mine. Okay. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. I wasn't sure what happened. So thank you for being with us tonight, everybody. We appreciate you. Amen. Uh, all right. Who then Johnson, can you close us in prayer? Father, we just thank you for the word on tonight. Lord, bless us. Lord, let us be closer to you each and every day. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. If those things we are not obeying and doing your word, Lord, we ask that you bless each household that is present tonight and let your spirit flow through us. Lord, we ask that you bless, bless each of us financially, mentally, spiritually, that we may, we may read your word and that we may obtain knowledge of your word, that we may speak the word and speak it. When anyone asked us about the Lord, that we may know your word and, and help them to be saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is Bishop Rick Johnson from Shield of Faith Christian Center. Amen. You're welcome to join us on Sunday morning. And we appreciate you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. See you Sunday morning at 1029. Amen. <laughs>